human rights norms are simply um, abstract statements of the good life and the good society. Uh, they depend upon human institutions, on human ideas, uh, and human uh, activity uh, to be made real. Um, you can talk about liberty, you can talk about due process, you can talk about freedom of expression, but if you don't have a society in which those are, are possible to express, you don't have a mechanism for implementing them, you don't have a court that will validate them in the event of breach, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have those ideals. The United States, first of all, has, it has to be said, was one of the uh, principal architects of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in conversation with many other communities, in conversations with a variety of different cultural and philosophical and religious traditions. But the United States, through the uh, extraordinary work of Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, through the great Four Freedom speech of President Roosevelt, uh, set the world uh, anew on the quest for understanding what the universal rights of human uh, beings actually are, having watched them um, be destroyed uh, in a devastating uh, series of, of depressions, gulags, death camps, and World War uh, II, which killed um, upwards of 60 million people uh, in the space of six years. The world needed to figure out what were the fundamentals that were non-negotiable, uh, and the United States helped articulate those because the United States had a long pattern uh, of articulating what are the fundamentals uh, which cannot be trespassed and whose trespass constitutes tyranny and triggers revolution. The religious communities don't have to be scared of human rights language as long as they're not scared of human rights norms. And what I mean by that is that the formulations linguistically that are set out in Western documents, uh, both constitutional and, and statutory, and set out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and its international progeny, are not uh, by themselves uh, the only way to think about human rights norms. And what religious communities have to recognize is that what we're promoting in all of these documents is a basic understanding of human dignity, of the good society, of the protection of the fundamental goods uh, of life that every person as a person should be able to enjoy. Exactly what you call them, exactly how you implement them, exactly how you number them, is far less important than that you put them in place on the ground in your own communities.